Revenge Films. The day of the incident, I was at work for an important conference. The meeting went on for a while, so we took a break and I went to grab a cup of coffee. I checked my phone briefly and noticed that I had a million missed calls. It was my wife's mother, Rose, and she called again as I was checking my phone, so I answered. Jill hurt her face and left arm badly and is in the hospital right now. Rose was crying over the phone. Immediately my mind went blank and my body went numb. My boss asked me what was wrong, so I told him what happened. Why didn't you tell me something that important, you idiot? Go home immediately! So, I excused myself early from the meeting. I was shaking in the car as I drove home. I somehow managed to make it home, but of course, no one was there. I saw some people nearby, and when I looked over to where they were crowded around, there was quite a big puddle of blood. Rose had told me that my wife, Jill, had hurt her face and arm, but that was all the information that I had. When I saw the blood, I imagined the worst. Maybe she was stabbed, or maybe she got in an accident. I just had horrible images racing through my mind. I asked some of the people there, but they'd all arrived after the incident, so no one could tell me anything definitive. I heard the cops were there too, but I couldn't figure out what happened. And Rose hadn't told me which hospital they were at, so I didn't know what to do. I was just so concerned about Jill, and I kept calling her phone. I was too panicked to realize there was no way that she could answer her phone in such a critical condition. I tried calling Rose up as well, but she wasn't picking up her phone either. Standing there alone, I imagined the worst, and I was bawling in the garage. When I finally received a phone call from Jill, I picked up the phone in a panic. We're done with the treatment, so I'll be heading home now. I was relieved to hear her voice, which sounded much better than I'd expected, and in the heat of the moment I exploded. Oh my gosh, what happened? Why didn't you pick up your phone? I caught myself and apologized. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to yell. Are you okay? Rose called me, and when I came home I saw blood on the streets. Yeah, I'm fine. After hearing her words, I calmed down and was able to calmly ask about what happened. Apparently, when she was cleaning the house, she heard a woman screaming, and when she looked out the window from the second floor, a couple who were walking their dog were being attacked by another large dog. Rose, who was cutting the grass in the front yard, ran over with a brush to help them. So, Jill ran down after her as well. The dog that was attacking them looked like a dog that you'd see in a dog fight, and when Rose grabbed its chain, it snarled. Jill thought it looked ready to bite Rose, so she took the chain and helped restrain it. Jill is quite a powerful woman, and after being tossed around for a while fighting the dog, the owner rushed over on a bike, and she was able to pass him the chain. They thought everything was finally under control, but when Jill went to check on the couple and their dog, which was also pretty big, that... That dog must have been agitated as well because it bit her in the face and the left arm. It was partially my fault. I should have expected that dog to be agitated after all that. I was just trying to protect her owners. I feel bad for them too, because now they feel responsible that I was hurt. Jill was on the other side of the phone, blaming herself for what had happened. When she came home, I lost my words for a moment. Yeah, she was treated, but the scars on her face and arm were deep and looked very painful. Holy crap, she's not fine at all. I swallowed my words in front of her, though. She was woman, after all. It was no laughing matter to be scarred up like that. I could tell that she was playing it off like that so that I wouldn't worry too much. On top of that, she was worrying about everyone else, even though she was the victim in this incident. I'm glad that couple wasn't hurt, though. I feel bad that they feel guilty just because I was being careless. Yeah. Well, you just got bit in the face. It's not the same thing for a woman and a man to get bit in the face. Your face is scarred. That's awful. I wouldn't have blamed her, even if she was more depressed about it. Why are you worrying about other people? Aren't you concerned about yourself, you idiot? Why are you such a pushover? I was having a whirlwind of emotions and thoughts. But, on the other hand, 
I was just glad that she was okay. I could feel my emotions just breaking me down. Don't worry, I'm okay. My wife was calming me down. How pathetic of me. But I found out how deeply Jill was scarred. Two days after the incident, in the middle of the night, I knew that Jill hadn't been sleeping well since the incident. I knew that she had been quietly leaving the bed and going into the room next door as to not wake me. I thought that she was in pain, but I was wrong. If your muscles and nerves are undamaged after a bite wound, normally they don't sew it up, and you just have to keep the scars sterile and wait for them to heal. So, although Jill thankfully didn't damage her nerves and muscles, I knew that the scars were deep enough to hurt badly and give her fevers, but she was happy and energetic as always. What had been disturbing her was the memory of her mother being snarled at, and the feeling that she had when she imagined the worst before going in to restrain the dog. She was getting flashbacks of the incident and wasn't able to sleep. I only noticed when I heard a faint sob from the next room one night. I could hear her from the bedroom. Oh, it was so frightening. So frightening. It was unbearable to realize that she was waiting for me to sleep every night to go cry alone like that. And I had to go talk to her. I I'm sorry, did I wake you? Jill quickly wiped away her tears and apologized to me. It made me even more sad to see her try to play it off like that. It must have all been so scary, Jill. I patted her head and Jill just broke down crying. I could feel all her emotions that she had been bottling inside flooding out with her tears. After that, Jill slowly started telling me how she felt inside. I was so afraid of what might happen to my mother. I wrapped the chain around my arm and promised myself I would never let go, no matter what happened to me. Listening to her words reminded me of being back in high school, when I almost got attacked by a big dog myself. I ignored the warning of the owner and tried to pet the dog carelessly. The next moment, the dog snarled and tried to jump on me. Thankfully, the owner was holding the leash and prevented the dog from hurting me, but... I remember thinking how easily a big dog like that could hurt and even kill an adult human being if it really wanted to. I remember feeling so vulnerable. Jill had just gone through that sort of experience. I didn't blame her for having PTSD. It was so easy to see the scars on her arm and face, but nothing is more painful than emotional scars. Technology has improved enough to heal physical wounds, and doctors are getting better at that every day. But emotional damage isn't that easy to fix. And Rose, she had her own emotional scars from watching her own daughter almost being killed by that dog after she tried to save her and had her own trauma from that. After that night, I started taking Jill and Rose to a psychiatrist. Jill is especially good at hiding her negative emotions, and I was so close to never noticing trauma, which made me even more concerned about getting her the proper help she needed to overcome her experience. Jill's wounds took a long time to heal, and when they did, she was left with big scars on her face and her left arm, and her arm still had after effects of numbness. This is nothing. I'm just a housewife, so it shouldn't be a problem. But there's no way that it wasn't a problem. Her arm was always numb, after all. The owners of the dog paid for the treatment, but Jill still had bite marks on her face. If they pay for the treatment, that's enough. That's what Jill says, but Rose and I feel that it is important for her as a woman to fix her scars. Plus, who knows what would have happened to that couple if Jill hadn't helped. Thankfully, the owners of the dog have offered to pay for plastic surgery as well. After thinking about the long-term effects of the scars and emotional distress that she may have to bear, I plan on taking them up on their offer. If they were the type of owners to try to blame Jill for jumping in, I would have fought them to the depths of hell. I still have regrets every time I see Jill sleeping. Would things have turned out differently if I was there? Maybe I could have prevented Jill from getting hurt. What would I have done if she'd have died?
died that day. I still remember the despair I felt when I came home after hearing Jill had been hospitalized and saw the blood on the street. More than anything, I am grateful that she's alive, even though she may have some scars. I couldn't physically protect her that day when she was attacked, but I promised myself to spend the rest of our days protecting her heart. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.